What's up guys, it's Brent LeBlanc coming back with another look development guide. Today I'm going to be texturing this uh, croquet set and I'm going to do a part one of the texturing process in Substance Painter and then on to Arnold for the part two. Let's get started. Alright, just pulling in my FBX for my croquet set. Alright. So the first thing I do every time is uh, we need to bake out uh, all of our mesh maps. So why this is important is because the way that uh, Painter evaluates a lot of its procedures and how it gets its reference space is through these texture bakes. So from its normal, its world space normal, its uh, position map, and then uh, all these other ones, curvature, thickness, ambient occlusion, uh, help drive the um, generators and then ID map is just uh, something you can set up um, so that it it calls out each shape uh, depending on its vertex color material color fi file ID or mesh ID um, I can do it but I don't usually do it uh, just because I, I manually mask everything but all right so here we go let's bake it and I'm gonna do 4096 and use low for high. All right. Okay, so I've got three UDIMs for um, each one of these croquet balls. But the the reason that I made them is not actually to drive UDIM. It's just so that I can see a few different variations at once. And then I'm going to end up baking them all down to a non-UDIM workflow just so I can um, get them all in the same tile. It'll make more sense after I, I transport it back over. So let's tackle... Our first problem, get this wood material. Now let's see if we got something in here that I could use. All right, so I'm just gonna use this wood rough. Okay, we gotta work on this seam. Our planner may work better. Okay, and we'll try to cover up a lot of those um, seams that it has going on there. And now I'm just uh, changing the base color and roughness values, okay. Now I want to kind of get some of those nicks and scratches in there and just kind of break up that roughness value and the height. So uh, let me just add a fill. And let's do a black mask. And I just left click that. This is kind of my target over here. So let me look through these grunges. I kind of like this one. Kind of taking some of those nicks. Mm, let me invert this. And another thing I'm going to do is add a um, filter, HSL. Then be sure to set it to pass through. Keep in mind, I'm still only in 1K, and I'll be exporting these out as 4K. Take a look at the roughness. Okay, I kind of want to um, break up that that height variation a little bit. So I'm going to add another fill. And I'm just going to make a smooth procedural noise. Clouds. Okay, then I'm just going to go to height to replace. So it's just kind of taking some of those areas and making them um, more smooth. So that it's not just this. I think what I want to do is probably multiply, tract. That's what I want. I'm not quite. I think this is onto the right track. All right. Now I want to. Uh, I'm going to move this a little. This bugging me a little bit. All right. So I'm going to put some fingerprints on there. Do just roughness. Black mask, fill, we'll look for fingerprints. This will work. And just keep doing triplanar because the sphere is difficult to hide those seams. Invert. Probably actually want to increase the size of these a little bit. That's kind of the scale I was going for. Now you can see those fingerprints on there and then the uh, the wood grain. And there's just a lot of variation going on. Give us nice control. Okay, so now this is kind of my base wood. I think that the 
contrast a little too much. What I can do is add random color over top. Flatten out the contrast of that. I'm in base color. Then you just want to mess with the uh, blending modes and mess with the opacity. Now what I'm going to do is start transferring the wood materials from the ball over to the mallet. Now for the mallet, I switched it from triplanar back to UV because uh, it just made more sense for how I laid out the UVs for that. Kind of have to do like an, an end grain on uh, this one. So I'll figure that out later. First, in kind of its impact zone, uh, let's go ahead and try to do something there. I'm going to do height, roughness, and I'll do HSL. First, I'm just going to paint on that impact zone. Add a fill here, tracked, and I'm just going to get high frequency dot. I'm going to blur this out a little bit. Now I'm getting to the danger of guessing what that looks like, but it looks like it's getting darker around the edges of the mallet. So I'm just going to add a layer and, and add an HSL uh, with pass through. And then I'll uh, start bringing that down and mask that out, that out in those areas. All right, and then get some brush here. Oh, this dirt. I'm going to set it to tangent wrap. And the size space to texture. Uh, these little uh, alignments, what they'll do is, for example, tangent wrap. I kind of understand what it's doing. Um, it will... Let me solo that. It will uh, wrap texture easier um, from tile to tile or from shell to shell um, because if you don't have that on, it kind of like if you turn it on to UV, which is sometimes that's what you want, um, it will kind of lock to that UV plane, that shell plane. So it won't let you go over that um, plane. So sometimes you actually want to be stuck to that that plane. But for this instance, I'm painting on an edge where two shells meet. And I, I go back and forth from painting. Um, in this part of the video, I just, uh, I'm going to speed through because uh, my, uh, my little girl came in here, wondered what I was doing. And I was uh, giving her a little tutorial on how, uh, how I was making this, even though she just wanted me to draw a cat, but, uh, yeah, continue to make this mallet much to her, much to her dismay. Uh, but anyway, I'm just adding in um, some grunges and fills and uh, paint layers uh, and then using uh, warps to make it irregular. And then I added in uh, these striped uh, ribs onto the mallet. Uh, you can see in the reference there. And then I'll add paint on top of that. So I did blur the um, those stripes a little bit so that there was a a softer uh, fall off um, with those ribs. And uh, and then I, that was like kind of preparing it for uh, adding in um, the uh, painted color uh, layers using a fill and the same ones. Well, one thing that I did is that I grabbed that signal and I kind of inverted it. I made like an anchor and then inverted it so that I could uh, cut out little tiny stripes that uh, go in between them so that it adds in um, like an indentation in between each one so it looked like it had been carved out of the uh, wood and uh, just added like another level of uh, detail to that uh, center area uh, what I could do is add a, a HSV in a previous video I had mentioned that I do not like layers but I've actually found some really good use cases for them um, that I didn't initially realize, which is uh, you can add a lot of filters to layers and different procedures that can uh, affect all the stack below it without um, being locked to um, an individual um, channel. Let's put this into a layer. 
pass through for that. Black. All right, so let's try to put some of this. And, and I'm not making an exact match. I'm just kind of, you know, eyeballing it here. Now I'm just finally prepping that layer to uh, receive its um, its paint channel. And then I'm just going to cut that uh, paint signal with a, a different um, grunge. And I'll use that uh, charcoal noise. All right. Starting to look kind of like one of those mallets. So uh, same type of deal with uh, this ball. Um, we need to add like one of those uh, stripes. I'll make this red. Black mask. Paint layer. Just want to do like one of those stripes that goes straight down. Let's go down this way. It'll be easier. You just hold shift and uh, left click to draw a straight line. It's not perfectly spherical. Um, I could have spent more time doing that. But the thing is, is like it kind of works not being completely spherical. Okay, and then um, just going to add a little bit of warp to it. I'm just going to pull in one of these grunges. Then I have to have the red one working. I'm going to start adding in the green lines as well that uh, go on the edges of the red. I'm just trying to get that spacing to be about even. And it's and it's picking up some of that uh, that warp that I did up here. So it's kind of making it even more warbly. Turn that on. I tend to like to uh, try to paint with my filters on sometimes so I can get the, the end result back or get the end result look. All right. Probably want to pull that in tighter, honestly. Yeah. Actually, let me redraw that. I'm just going to speed through that real quick. These uh, lines aren't straight at all, but uh, let's pretend that I made these at home in 1930-something uh, or other. Okay, so pretty much finished up on that mallet part in the ball. So now we're going to start on this stick. I'm going to grab this base croquet. I think I noticed it's kind of a little bit darker here. that bottom part and then just blur that mm, bit of stretching there and the seam is not too worried about that take out some of that contrast one thing you'll notice that I keep on doing is kind of zooming out and looking at the hole and then moving the light back and forth because you need to go and check your work uh, as you're going so you don't just work straight forward. Okay, so now I want to work on that uh, these, uh, green stripes. I think this indicates I've never played croquet or a little kid and I had no idea how to play, but I'm pretty sure that the color of the mallet and your uh, croquet ball has some correlation. So we'll just go with that. All right, so now I'll, I'll paint those uh, green stripes in here. I'm just going to grab the red and green that I was using in the other one. So well, hey, that doesn't not too bad already. Decreasing amount of stripes. I'm just stretching it in Y. It's actually pretty close. 
change the scale on this thing. All right, so now I got to cut out some of those areas. Okay, now let's put those black lines in there. Duplicate that. Well, it's actually red. I don't think those stripes are going to work, so I'm just going to have to draw it. Do UV for this one. So I'm going to do texture. That way it maintains the shape regardless. All right, let's take a look. Oof, that's some pretty bad tearing. That is because I do not have enough loops. I don't have enough loops where I cut that, so it's tearing really badly. Just deal with it. And remember, we're viewing this at 1K. Oof, that's real bad. Definitely going wrong over there. I'm curious, I maybe just don't have enough loops in that area. Probably be putting, um, what do they call that, bracketing? Bracketing loops to hold that edge together. Eh, whatever. From this distance, you won't see it. All right. Okay, so let's work on that. The box a bit. I wanted to kind of base it off of this guy. Let's try this one. Go to work with this as a base. All right, so we need to turn all this. I think I've got one that's already flipped. Let me see. Now this one's a smart material, so it's actually using the AO bake to to drive some of the um stuff going on but the thing is it's interesting about this one is I wanted to do this little little dovetail cut All right, for that dovetail cut let me go back to 2k I'm gonna copy this and it's a bit darker you see that I'm gonna make a layer filter HSL pass darken that whole Thing. Black mask. Whoa, that's not good. Um, you see, I was like, what is going on there? I have this box and that mallet on the same tile. Fix that. Let me save this. I need to re export. Yeah, they're both in the first, first tile. All right, so I'll just grab this. Good, re-export that. And I'm just gonna go to my project settings and re-import that. It shouldn't cause too many problems. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is rebake this one and this one. So let me copy these two. So I need to rebake tile 114 turn off ID bake only 114 all right take a minute here all right so we got that bake done I'm not going to be worried about rebaking this one uh, because I'm just going to use this texture set originally I thought I was going to use these variations to kind of do a mix and match but honestly I think I can just work with this, with these three, because this one's going to populate to these, and then this one will populate to this, and then I'm going to use all these controls in different ways to uh, make variations. So I'm really going to worry about this box. I'm not a super huge fan of that material, honestly. There we go. I like this one a little better. I made this for tabletop. Okay, so for that, that dovetail, and we gotta add some grunge and some lightning lightning on the tops. Let me do a black mask. Go in here, add a layer. 
filter HSL. I'm gonna move this frequency up, offset it. All right. Black mask, paint layer. All right, for that dovetail, just add a paint layer on top. It's a little janky here. From far away, it'll work. We'll see. All right, kind of see what I'm trying to do. If I take this density a little closer, it'll work better. What I'll probably also want to do and lay that a little bit. I need to tighten that. And then for this little edge here, give a little ingrain. It's kind of working. And then I would just uh, repeat that same thing for the other side. All right, that'll sell it good enough for now. Okay, so another thing I wanted to add is this top edge looks lighter even though this is skewing really yellow I think I wanna make it a little more yellow and go to this dovetailed version okay so yeah, we still gotta make that top edge. It's quite a bit brighter. I'll just do a whole HSV signal here. Okay, so now I wanna get this little writing on here. All right, now I'm just looking for a font that will kinda work. I don't think there's anything here that's really gonna work for 1930s style. It's going to add a fill. This one will have to have to do. Um, there could be a way to add new fonts. I do not know about that. Let me turn these settings down really low. Fonts, for whatever reason, are very slow. Throw back to my hometown. Yeah, the font was really not doing me any favors. Hmm. Blur this a bit. Let's take up that histogram scan, see if I can clamp this. And it looks like it's kind of cut off a little bit because it's like this was not this box was not originally made for this croquet. Yeah, I guess it was. Eclipse croquet. I stand corrected. Oh, maybe this box comes down on top of it, and then you see the rest of the lettering. Whatever. So we're going to pretend that this was cut from um, some other box, like a shipping box, and then somebody just repurposed it into a croquet tray. That's kind of the idea that I had here. Duplicate shadow effect that's going on. Old school drop shadow. Looks like it's cutting it out a little bit too. What I could do is add an anchor font cut. You know what? Copy this. All right, I just want to take down the intensity for that color. So it kind of looks like a stencil. I'm going to put these all in a layer because one thing I need to do 
Let's cut off that top part. All right, copy. Paste. Weird. Okay, that's confusing. When I paste this layer in here, it returns a wrong mask for some reason. I don't know what's going on there. All right, let's not worry about that. Let's debug. All right, so I just want to cut off this part. Okay, and then what I want to do is add this break up here. Um, and I want it to be kind of driven by this um, wood grain. So let me grab that. Well, that noise is quite noisy. Makes it just look noisy. Turn that down. Uh, let's see, where's that grain at? Grab this one. Okay. And add an anchor. We'll just call it, we'll just leave it wood fibers. That makes sense. Go up here, add a fill, and I'm gonna grab that wood fibers. I'm gonna tear into it. Then I'm gonna just add in another fill on top of that, and it's just gonna add in like some chips and uh like little cuts and stuff. All right. Uh oh. Oh, I want to track that. Balance this now. Springfield, Ohio. Croquet Legends. Not this fancy 1930s font, but uh, I don't know how to add new fonts to the painter, but that'll work for now. All right, guys, that's it for this video. So please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you uh, have any ideas for future videos. And in the second part, we're going to be going over taking all of these textures and uh, putting them together in Arnold. All right. See you in the next one.